As I said before, uh, we asked the Prime Minister of the Bahamas, Mr. Christ Perry Christie, uh, to, to please help us continue from now on in a constructive approach without having us having to demonstrate, without him having to come out and attack us. And let's work together from now on uh, so that we can get uh, the result that we all want, which is the truth to come out. I must also say that we do fully recognize the positive steps that the Bahamian government is beginning to take in order to deal with this situation uh, of, of the uh, Carmichael Detention Center or the conditions there. First of all, we dislike the fact that the uh, police report has not yet been made public by the, by the government that it had to be leaked to the press, and of course we salute that press that is courageous enough to bring out the truth. The Bahamian press has been very uh, professional in handling this situation, given the government and given us the opportunity to both express our concerns, and we salute that. We, we have, there's an anecdote that I would like to make to you later, but we also, uh, we'd like to see that uh, the, the report is made public. But putting that aside for now, the Bahamas has said that it, it will re reconstruct or rebuild the, uh, the uh, detention center. And it has already begun uh, construction of two dormitories. So that is a very, very important step. Secondly, they had already installed the video cameras inside the building and I suppose that they will probably do the same when they uh, finish constructing the new buildings. So that's another very positive step because it will help the guard, uh, the, the government know if the guards go beyond their limits, but also if the inmates or the detainees commit acts that are improper because we understand that at times uh, also detainees do things that, that uh, are not proper. We understand that. And we understand the plight that the Bahamas has. But most of the times the detainees remain uh, taking all those uh, mistreatments because of fear. They remain calm and yet, unfortunately, the mistreatment uh, continues. The other thing that has been uh, publicly expressed by the Prime Minister and the Minister of Foreign Relations is that they will they acknowledge that the, the center was not according to international standards so they will bring it up to international standards in terms of how they treat refugees. So that's a major important uh, development in all this story. Um, of course, they removed the guards, most of them, of the guards that beat up the people. They, they took them out of there. Our concern is that those guards end up in another prison doing the same thing to, uh, to uh, uh, undocumented detainees or to the Bahamian detainees for whatever other reason. So we are concerned about that. Those people must not be in a detention center. They can't handle themselves. They, they believe that they're, they're almighty. Um, the, other, the other issue that I think it's, uh, well, that we need to recognize is that the Bahamas has granted uh, permission for 12 of the detainees to go to Panama as Panama had requested. Unfortunately, without any reason to do that, they for 11 months, they had held the Cuban detainees there who were mistreated. And suddenly, when they saw that they were going to uh, be, uh, uh, yeah, their testimony could get to the press, they shipped them out to Cuba. And that was a very unfortunate step on the side of uh, the government of the Bahamas that made us very, very, uh, very upset and, and, and very sad. And what we are asking in the letter is for the uh, Prime Minister to talk to the Cuban government and to say to the Cuban government, uh, please allow these people to, to provide their testimonies to the press and to the investigators and to whoever calls. Because already we know of at least two cases where uh, they have been visited by uh, the Cuban repressive police to inflict fear in them if they talk to us. Okay, Cuba has a repressive regime, has a dictatorship. This is why people leave Cuba massively into other countries. Before this dictatorship, the Bahamas or the United States did not have a migration problem from Cuba. So it is obviously the system. And the same system that did that 
you know, if a government anywhere knows that its citizens is, are being mistreated in another country, it is, it is the duty of that government to advocate for those citizens. Now, have you heard in the midst of all this controversy where reports are coming out that people were tortured, have you, any of you heard one statement made by the Cuban government on behalf of the tortured people or the mistreated people or that they want an inquiry or any diplomatic note presented to the Bahamian government say, we want to know what is going on with the detainee, Cuban detainees there. Has anybody heard that? No, because there is complicity to hide the truth and we want the truth to, to come out and we want to encourage the Prime Minister to help us. We don't want to do any more demonstrations. We don't want to do any more hunger strike. I said we don't want to do them, but we will do them if we need to. We don't want to do them. We, what we want to do is sit down and talk about these issues and work together. I know that we can, we can encourage governments to sit down together and talk about the plight that the Bahamas has. I know that we can work together to see how we find a, wa a, a, a water, uh, uh, a water, uh, the, the, the purifying uh, plant uh, for for the, for the center if they if they don't have fresh water there, so people don't have to drink salty water or rotten water, which is what is happening right now, and it's it's sad. Women are being harassed in many ways. The guards, in exchange for water and food, have conducted sexual acts with the women. Now, a guard is like a teacher in a school. The teacher is not supposed to have any uh, any love affairs of any sort, and much less forced uh, uh, engagement with the students. The guards are not supposed to engage with the detainees at all. And yet, they that is something that has been happening throughout the years, and to many, to, to the different nationalities, because of the need for the people to survive. They need to drink pure, uh, pure water instead of uh, rotten or salty water. That's, that's a basic human need. They need to eat some food because most of them have lost between 30 and 40 pounds in one year. That happens in concentration camps. So they need to survive. And you, we have many testimonies recorded here and we will now make a phone call to um, to uh, to somebody in Cuba, who whose lung was punctured, uh, we have women saying we were exposed to sexual harassment. The other women were exposed to sexual harassment. There are many many testimonies of that happening. We have some of them recorded. We can make uh, some of these calls right now so that you can hear it yourself. Um, these are very long testimonies, the ones we have, so we can, uh, if you, if you at the end of the session here, you provide Rosie a list of emails, we, we will email you the raw interview as it comes out, so that you know that we are not in making something up, okay? These are testimonies that should have been taken by the police of everyone in the detention center. Rápidamente quiero también que Jesús Alexis eh, nos diga también algo, algo muy importante que está pasando y otros comentarios, pero quiero hacer, eh, decirle que le estamos enviando una carta al primer ministro de las Bahamas eh, para que el primer ministro de las Bahamas eh, haga público el reporte que fue filtrado a la prensa donde se reconocen los abusos. Aquí tenemos algunos de esos reportes que han salido públicamente. En, en las Bahamas, como ustedes pueden ver, ustedes pueden ver aquí, esto no lo inventamos nosotros, esto es lo que ha averiguado la prensa de las Bahamas, hombres con, la, con, eh, con marcas en sus espaldas como si fueran latigazos, eso es crueldad, eso es tortura, personas pateadas y sus pulmones atravesados por costillas, guardias que han admitido que eso está pasando, Todo esto que estaba pasando mientras a nosotros nos decían que éramos unos bucapleitos que estábamos haciendo esto contra las Bahamas, nada de eso es verdad. Lo que queríamos era que saliera la verdad y la verdad está saliendo. La otra verdad que está saliendo, yo voy a dejar que Jesús Alexis en español se la explique, porque es muy triste y nosotros que no vamos a parar la campaña hasta tanto esa parte, no hay un compromiso que va a salir públicamente. De eso tenemos algunos testimonios, pero yo quiero que sea Jesús Alexis 
de que explique esa parte de las mujeres y también de los niños.